Hey family, hey, 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 how is everybody doing on this amazing morning of Thursday, <laughs> the 12th of October. I hope that everybody's good. It is your girl, uh, Taban Sakaicho of God's Heart on Mission. I hope that you're well. Um, I trust that you had a good night's rest. Um, and then maybe if you are at work or at home or wherever you may be, I trust that the God of Glory um, has obviously gone ahead of you uh, to prepare the day for you for this is the day he has made We are certainly going to rejoice and be glad in it. So welcome to today's teaching. It won't be Super long, right? Um, I hope not. Okay. Let me not say that. I don't know. We're just gonna freestyle <laughs> Okay, fam, we're just gonna freestyle but welcome again to today's teaching. So whether you watch later or now Doesn't really matter. I'm just here as the spirit leads, you know, we don't really have a schedule um god decides and i just kind of like tag along to his, in, in his plans basically i just say yes and we do this thing so first and foremost i want to open up in prayer and then i'm gonna share what the lord has been ministering in my heart with you because i do believe that he's not only talking to me but he's wanting me to share this with my brothers and sisters from across the globe so let us pray and then we jump straight on it Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. This is the day you've made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Holy Spirit, have your way in this teaching. I pray the blood of Jesus over it, over each and every person that will be listening. Heavenly Father, will be tuned in now, or those who will be listening in the future, in the years to come. Lord God, speak through me. May you richly minister into their hearts, Lord God. Those sorting your comfort, reassurance, Heavenly Father, your encouragement, may they receive it by the power of your Spirit. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the finished work of the cross. Ask Heavenly Father that you continue to lead us in the way that we should go. Send forth your angel, Heavenly Father, ahead of us. And plead the blood of Jesus over every single um, sister or brother in Christ who is part of this community. I ask, Lord God, that you just shine your face upon them, that you grant them your favor, that you extend your hand of protection over them and their households. Lord God, we also lift up um, your nations, Heavenly Father, who are at war right now. Um, the nation of Israel, the nation of Palestine, of the Heavenly Father, Russia, as well as Ukraine, and many other parts of this world that you've created, Lord. We pray for those brothers and sisters, Heavenly Father, and their families, Lord, that you remember them, that you pour down and rain, rain down upon them, Lord God, those governance, those govern, governments, rather, Heavenly Father, that you pour down your mercy, that you remember your children, Lord. Above all things, may they all come into the revelatory knowledge of who Christ is, who is the Lord and Savior, the true Son of the living God. May they come to repentance, Heavenly Father, and call upon the name that is above all names and get to say that Jesus is Lord, for it's all about salvation, Lord. It's all about winning souls. So we pray for comfort, for healing, Lord God, of their hearts, especially the mothers, Heavenly Father, who's lost, who's lost their children, Lord God, wives who've lost their husbands, children who've lost their parents, parents who've lost their children, yeah, Lord, we just ask that you move in a very supernatural way for you are a God who can do all things. So have your way spread on them, God, in all your nations across the globe. Um, and as we embark on this journey that you've placed us on, Heavenly Father, help us to discern your steps, to move from a place of obedience, to be quick to respond, Lord God, and to remain at your feet, Lord Jesus. And I pray all of this in the mighty name and matchless name of Christ Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So fam, okay, <laughs> ignore that background noise. So fam, um, all right, I'm going to go straight to it. I'm going to go straight to it. So if you have your Bible with you, please turn with me to Acts 5. So first and foremost, hold on. The title of this message is the Lord's plans for you are in way unwavering and unstoppable. And what God is doing right now in his children, those who are in Christ Jesus, in spirit and in truth, whatever he has you embarking on right now, you need to know and understand that it's going to be unstoppable. Nothing and no one will be able to stand in the Lord's way in that which he's doing for you in this season. Whether it's asked you to establish a new business, ask you to make a career change, ask you to, um, you know, to, to get married, you know, to start a family, to have a child, to pick up an assignment or a project, whatever it is that he has assigned for you to do, 
in this season, provided that you remain in him, of course. Remain at his feet. It's very, very important. By faith, remain at Christ Jesus' feet. Nothing will be able to stop it because he's going to roll it out <laughs> himself. The God of glory is going to roll this out himself. So let us read on, like I said, the book of Acts, uh, chapter 5, from, I pick it up from verse 17 to 42. So it's a bit of a lengthy read, but there's a reason behind this. Okay, so just a quick backdrop. This speaks about the apostles, right, that were busy. Um, I think Peter was one of them that were busy uh, proclaiming the good news right and obviously the pharisees and the sadducees of this world were not happy and they wanted to stop them um, because the bible says that they were doing remarkable miracles by the spirit of god and that's why the religious uh, leaders wanted to do away with them because obviously they were preaching everything that is against what they know and they didn't want them to preach in the name of the lord christ jesus so let us read up and then i'll break it down as the lord broke it down to me all right, from chapter 12, from verse 12, sorry, of chapter 5, the book of Acts, it says, The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. And all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, People brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow, not Jesus, might fall on them, on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits, and all of them were healed. Miraculous signs powered by the Spirit of God. He says, signs, miracles, and wonders shall follow those who are governed and who have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit fully operational um, inside of them. So a lot of people were brought to salvation. They were brought to the, to, to the God of glory to accept Christ Jesus as Lord over their lives because of signs, miracles, and wonders that the apostles were performing where many got healed. You know, um, evil spirits were casted out of these people. And as a result, obviously, the believers grew in number. And that's, that still remains true today. That is my job and yours. <laughs> we are no exception to the rule. It is our job to go out. Matthew 28, 16, 20, right? And, 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 and point everybody to the way, the truth, and the life. And that um, is Christ Jesus. And then he continues to say from 17, Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. So obviously, seeing the apostles doing these miracles, performing these wonderful signs, powered by the Spirit of God, drove them to jealousy. This is the Sadducees. Therefore, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. Who, Lord. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail, and brought them out so they because of all this miraculous wonders that we're doing and they brought people to the faith in Christ Jesus the Sadducees you know the religious leaders figure let's throw them in jail so that yeah they just sit there because they had been telling them not to preach um, in the name of the Lord Christ Jesus but during the night, the Bible says, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. It continues to say in 20, go stand in the temple, cause he said, and tell the people the full message of this new life. Having been made a new creation in Christ Jesus. Come on, Lord. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told. Obedience is everything when it comes to the Lord. Okay, because angels are assigned to us to minister to us. The Bible teaches us that. Right, so it's important that we also do as they tell us because it's God who um, assigns them to us and then we have to follow through with the instructions that they give us because it comes directly from the Lord. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts as they had been told and began to teach the people. Business as usual. <laughs> when the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sahedrin, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, the full assembly of the elders of Israel and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. 
So they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were puzzled, wondering what would come of this. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. I want to just pause here a little bit. Do you see how the Lord <laughs> just makes it known that he is God? So these apostles, they get thrown in jail, right? So everybody's aware that they are taken off the streets and they are thrown in jail. But as the Bible says, during the night, the angel of the Lord obviously sets them free, opens the jail and lets them out and tells them, you go right back in a public arena. When you stand in temple courts, that's a public arena. So everybody that's going past or those that are receiving the word, everybody can see you. So he still comes and displays them right there. Not bothered. Not bothered. Whether or not the Sadducees are going to know or catch wind, you know, of the fact that they were present in the very same uh, temple courts where they had been preaching before. Business as usual. All right. Just... Yeah, make, make a mental note of that. Because the, the, the angel didn't say go and hide. He says, no, you go back and you go and continue to preach this message, speaking about the new life found in Christ Jesus. You go about preaching the gospel of Christ Jesus. Exactly right there where I know, like I know, they won't miss you. In the temple courts. Then he says someone, this is just a, a, somebody, who was part of the crowd, obviously, came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing. So everybody knew they had been placed in jail. But then the very same people came to say, hold on a minute. There they are again. We thought they were in jail, right? Then someone came in and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple cause teaching, with, teaching the people. At that, the captain went to his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. 27. Having brought the apostles, they made them appear before the sa. Sahedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. They repeat themselves again. He said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. Mm. Obedience to God is better than sacrifice. I love that response. And that is what we should be telling people. If somebody comes out sideways and try to derail you from the mission that the Lord has pur purposed you to do, the response should be, well, we are about the business of obeying God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead and he continues to preach the gospel whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. That's why they were able to do signs, miracles and wonders because they had the Holy Spirit living inside of them because they believed in the name and they got saved and then they received the baptism of the holy spirit let's carry on 33 when they heard this they were furious and wanted to put them to death now they didn't want to just put them back in jail they wanted them dead but a pharisee man sorry but a pharisee named gamel gamelel gamelel lord forgive me for this eh? a teacher of the lord the law rather who was honored by all the people stood up in the Sahedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them, men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to this man. Some time ago, Tedious appeared claiming to be somebody and was and, and about 400 men really to him. He was killed, all his, all his followers dispersed and it was and it all came to nothing. So he gave obviously the first scenario that there's this gentleman by the name of Tedious, who claimed to be a somebody, and he had followers as well, but um, he, when he got killed, all his followers dispersed. After him, Judas the Galilean appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, here it comes, therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go, for if their purpose or activities of human origin, it will fail. 
But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop this man. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. So here's it's, it's a two-sided message. The first message is this. You as the person that has obeyed the Lord in picking up that assignment or that instruction and you are running with it, continue to run with it, right? Because you, you would have received revelation that God wants you to do what he has assigned you to do, right? And here the, the word of God says that if, if this assignment, if this business, if this career path, if this new position, if this new marriage, if this task that you've picked up is from the Lord, no one will be able to stop you. And if they try to stop you, they will only find themselves fighting against God himself. Now, you don't want to be in a position when you are taking God head on because you won't survive. Right? And then it also, the second part to this message also serves as a warning to those tempering, trying to disrupt, trying to block, trying to frustrate, trying to sabotage the plans that the Lord has for an individual to do whatever that project is whatever that business is whatever it is that the lord has asked you for example to do do it but also know that those who are watching you and are gonna go back to their ways to try and you know work their thing and work their i don't know what they do in the backdrop they won't be able to stop this they will only find that they are fighting against the Lord by trying to frustrate, to stop, to block, to, de to, to detour God's plans for you with regards to that project. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Pardon? Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they still persisted to say, you got to stop talking about the Lord Jesus. But here's the interesting part. The apostles left the Sahedrin rejoicing because they'd been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, in the temple courts, and now from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ, which means the anointed one. So what, what is the Lord saying here? Whatever it is that he has assigned for you to do, that task, as I said in the previous message, understand that it serves its purpose. That project is actually a ministry. That assignment is actually a ministry. So you have to stay on it. But stay on it with the confidence of knowing that whoever tries to come against you will not be able to stop what the Lord is doing through you. They will not be able to block what the Lord is doing through you. They will not be able to frustrate, let alone sabotage what the Lord is doing through you. Because it is not by power or might, it is by his spirit. And it's because it's been because it's coming directly from the Lord. Because it's coming directly from the Lord. It is not of human origin. It is not you coming out with that assignment that project it doesn't derive from a human including yourself the person unto whom this task has been bestowed it comes from the lord they will not be able to stop you but rather as the word says they will only find themselves fighting against god nobody is going to stop the plans that the Lord has for you. This task, that project, this business, that assignment, that career path, nobody, no one, provided that of course you have the Holy Spirit. You are in Christ, in spirit and in truth. If you're not sure what that looks like, take it back to the Lord so that you, you become in the you have you're in the right standing with him. Because God is about using that assignment and that career to minister to his people, to reveal his glory, to reveal his power, using whatever it is that he has placed in your hands. So you do not need to fear because it's not you that they'll be fighting. 
or trying to come up against, they will be coming up against the Lord who is in heavenly places. And his name is Jehovah. He is Yahweh. There I am that I am. The one and only. The true living God of Israel. And they won't survive that. That I can promise you. And nobody coming out of there alive. If they persist. So, they should just heed the warning. Step away. Get out of the way. Roll over to the side. And allow for those who have said yes. To what the Lord has instructed them to do. To do it in peace. Because you coming up against them. This is then warning. I don't know. The Holy Spirit is sitting on this one. You trying your old tricks. Of trying to block. Because I know, you know, our videos here don't get just watched by those who are in Christ Jesus. There are monetary spirits running the streets. Satan has his people on assignments. But here I've got a word for you. If you are on the dark side of things, dark side of the fence, rolling for, 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 for Satan, you try and lift a finger and come after one of God's chosen children whom he has assigned for his purposes, for his plans that he has bestowed upon them. In this season, you will be coming up against God, but you will not be able to stop. Nothing, nothing, not one thing will you be able to stop that the God of glory is going to be doing through them. Because it is for his glory. It is for his kingdom. And it is powered by his spirit. Powered by his spirit. The Lord then reminded me of this verse, and this is why it's not going to fail. And you don't have to worry. This is now for somebody who is panicking, fearful, you know, because some of the things that the Lord is calling you to do is in a public setting. You gotta have to come out. You know, you can't be operating from behind the scenes anymore. God is gonna have to use you as a light, as, as a city upon a hill. You gotta be that, you know, that light in dark places. So all eyes will be on you. All eyes will be on you. And it can be intimidating. But he's using you and that which he has placed upon your life as a ministry to reach the nations for his purpose, for his purpose. And he's right there with you. He's behind you. It's his mission. It comes from him. It's not of human origin. Nobody initiated nothing there. It's all God. That's why it's going to be sustained. All right. And then Romans 8 from 31 to 39 says, You need not fear. And with everything that I have said, take comfort in this. From 31 it says, Romans 8, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how, he, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? They tried to have them in jail because they charged them and said, well, we've told you to stop preaching in the name that is above all names. They were supposed to complete that. In the name that is above all names. Let's just be clear. But it's good thing they have it on a capital N. But you catch what I'm saying. They tried to put that charge on them. It didn't stick. The God of glory, his, by his spirit, because he's the God that works miracles and wonders and signs in our lives. They could not believe that they were let out of jail. The Bible says that the, the jail gates or doors were still locked, but the apostles were not inside because the angel of the Lord came through at night and nobody broke nothing and removed God's chosen vehicles, God's cho 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 chosen vessels and assigned them to carry on with the mission. Proof that nothing is going to stop that assignment, that mission, that task that the Lord has placed upon your life. So you forge ahead with boldness. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, 
more than that who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Not only <laughs> as the Lord has signed you on this mission, then you have a whole Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the, the, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, sitting on the right hand side of the Father and you are one with him and he's interceding for you. And then you have the Holy Spirit in you who also intercedes for you as you pray when you don't even know what to pray for. And then he walks with you. Go to the left, to the right. Do this, don't do that. Say this, don't say that. You have heaven, all of heaven. <laughs> God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit begging you in this assignment. So you do not need to fear. Nothing and no one is going to be able to stop that which the God of glory is doing in your life. They will only find themselves fighting against God. And I can promise you this, they are not going to win. They just, some won't even make it out of their life. Truth. It's all over the Bible where God has taken, you know, where he's told Abraham that your enemies will be my enemies. Your adversaries will be my adversaries. It's that personal. We are at that level now. <laughs> we are at that level. Thank you, Jesus. Let's remind ourselves again of what the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 54, 17 says. Inasmuch as they'll be sitting in their little corners and their little meetings as they've been doing before, and God allowed for them to carry on fashioning weapons, of both spiritual and physical. The Lord allowed for those weapons to form, but they did not prosper because you're still standing. You're still alive and well, looking amazing, doing this thing called life with the Lord, who is life himself. They fashioned so many, so many weapons and directed them your way and none landed. And none will, will never lend. Because the Bible says, doesn't say some weapons. It doesn't say a little weapons. It doesn't say many weapons. It doesn't say a few weapons. It says no. N-O. N-O. No weapons or no weapon, rather, whatever it is. Because weapons come in many facets and many forms. No weapon. So it doesn't matter what that weapon is. What it looks like. How deadly it is. No weapon forged against you will prevail. And you will refute every tongue that accuses you. So nobody's going to be able like, to, be, to be standing against you because God is for you. He's chosen you for this particular assignment. And you've got a whole Christ Jesus interceding for you in that assignment and he lives inside of you by the holy spirit and then those that try and rise up against you or that mission at hand they are coming up against god so you just gotta stay out of the way look pretty and be about the business of the lord be about the business of the lord <laughs> thank you jesus thank you lord Because many of them sit there out of arrogance and pride to forge weapons against uh, God's children, God's chosen ones, right? Do my prophets no harm. Touch not my anointed ones. No, touch not my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. But no, 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 no. They are going to come out against the instruments of the Lord. God's chosen people, chosen army, special vessels. To do extraordinary things for the kingdom for god's glory for his purposes we are here on god's mission not our own god's mission and the apostles were assigned by the lord what they were doing the gentleman said if it comes from god it will not fail and you won't be able to stop it it will stay because god is consistent and he does not fail and nobody can come against the Lord. No one is coming against their Lord. They look at you because you are human. Oh, but the one who lives in you is greater than the one that's in the world. Lest they forget. Oh, Lord Jesus. Don't even. Okay, let's move on to Proverbs 19.20. Lord God. 
thank you jesus for this the words are so comforting lord you are your word thank you jesus i know maybe a sister or brother might need it to hear this i'm also ministering to myself fam we all in this together proverbs 19 21 says Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. I'll read it again. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So, you know, the, the passage of scripture, this passage of scripture, obviously is relatable to each and every brother and sister who is in Christ, right? Who knows the Lord. Because we make plans, but we know that the Lord's purpose is going to prevail. But so do Satan's people. They make plans every day about, oh, how can I block this? How can I stop that? How can I kill her? How can I kill him? How can I frustrate that? How can I curse this? And they forget that the Lord's plans are going to prevail over the very thing they are trying to attack in that person's life because they don't understand that it's coming from the Lord. And then they wonder, hold on a minute, I've sent so many weapons against this person, but none of them has actually prevailed. That's because of the spirit we carry the all supreme holy spirit stop making plans against god's children against god's gods it's a warning this to those who are on the dark side of things stop making plans to disrupt the plans of god in his children's lives for his purposes. God sees your heart. He knows your motives. He knows your thoughts before they even enter your mind. You want to get off of that. Because you will literally be trying to take God head on. And again, the Holy Spirit is sitting on this one. Heads are going to roll. It's a stern warning. This message is not cute. But it is the truth. The Bible is the truth and it's written through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit who is also known as the spirit of truth so you want to sit on this do not try and lift the finger trying to come up against God's children because whatever they are assigned to do whether it's public or private whether it's big or small to God he knows what he's doing he doesn't judge things in, the, in, in accordance to how we judge it here on earth he, but everything he does is according to his purpose, especially for those who've laid down their lives and picked up the cross and are being aligned or realigned back into the, the, the right positioning or they're being realigned properly so that they move in accordance to the will of the Father. There is nothing anybody's going to be able to do to stop that which the God of glory is doing through them. But they will find themselves coming up against the Lord and good luck with that. That's all I'm saying. Good luck with that. Nobody is going to be able to stop what the Lord is doing in this season through his children. What else, Holy Spirit? Hold on, Lord. There was something you were saying there. Okay, bring it back, Lord. <laughs> So again, <laughs> having a moment, the Lord said something and I was speaking about something else, but I thought I caught it, but I think it's, it's some way, but Lord will bring it back if he wants me to share it now. So move with confidence, stay in your secret closet and speak to the Lord. It will sometimes feel overwhelming that which the God of glory has um, bestowed upon you to carry, but you're not doing this by your own strength. Do not for one minute put yourself under so much pressure to be like oh my goodness i'll be trying to figure everything out you are doing this with god you are rebuilding with god you are restoring with god allow for him to carry the heavy burden or burdens and exchange your heavy burden for his light burden and his yoke is easy and cast your cares upon the lord he will give you his rest and his peace, not of this world. His peace that surpasses all understanding. Your job is to remain rooted in the Lord. Rooted in the Lord. Because you, you want to move. 
Again, I mentioned this last time. You want to move in accordance to his will. Every single step you make determines whether you're flowing in the right direction or not. So you want to be continuously in his presence to hear very clearly his small still voice so that you pick up on his instructions. Because it's not for you and it's not about you. It's about God and his assignment. About his kingdom. About the salvation of his sons and daughters across the nations. So God is definitely on that level where he's going global. So get your house in order. Talking about your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. Get your house in order so that you're able to host his presence. Jesus, Lord. Get your house in order. Lord, I never saw this one coming. Your mind, your spirit, your soul, and your body. Get that in order. So that that is then, you know, your body can become the temple of the Lord. Put on the mind of Christ. Put on the full armor of God. If you've got issues in the heart, address that right now. Get, get, get things sorted. Get your house in order. Get your house in order. And allow for the Lord to reside in you by his spirit. So that you're free flowing, you know, free flowing. Because you're allowing yourself to be controlled by the spirit. The spirit of Christ, the Bible says. Jesus, Lord, come on now. The spirit of Jesus, the Bible says. I was so chuffed the other day when I read um, in, in, in the book, you know, um, in the Bible and on that passage of scripture, they were referencing um, the Lord Jesus Christ, his spirit or the Holy Spirit as the spirit of Jesus. And now the, you know, Apostle Paul in Romans speaks about the Holy Spirit, the spirit of Christ. Yeah. God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. One. The Godhead. The Godhead. So, just find confidence and comfort. And I hope you're encouraged and strengthened by this word. Yes, attacks are going to come. Standard. But so has Christ overcome the world. Has he not overcome the world? So what does he tell us? Do not fear, for I have overcome the world. And upon this rock I'll build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail over it. The gates of Hades shall not prevail over the church of Christ. In spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. So those who are quite excited, right, about coming against the Lord and getting all chuffed up about being weird, mingling and trying to disrupt the plans of the Lord that is rolling out in real time now in the lives of his sons and daughters. Be warned. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So get your hands off of it. Don't try and form any weapon. No witchcraft. No voodoo. No, what do you call it? Black magic. No satanic rituals. None of those things are going to work. Not one. Nothing. Nothing. No weapon, none, zero. Because the gates of Hades are not prevailing over this church, the individual, the son or the daughter of God. None of it. You will only find yourself coming against God. And you don't want that. God loves us enough to warn us. God loves us enough to... <laughs> warn us because he doesn't wish for anybody to perish including the sangitas sangomas nyangas whatever you whatever they are satanists the whole clan he doesn't wish for anybody to perish so you, if you are busy with that you want to repent today right now and give your life to jesus and he'll heal you because jesus loves you but where are we going with this <laughs> Because Jesus loves you, right? He doesn't want for you to perish. But from time to time, you'll get Satan oppressing God's children because every single human being created is created in the image of God, Sangeeta or not.
but you want to come and repent, ask for forgiveness, and receive Christ Jesus and Lord and Savior over your life. And he will heal you, he will restore you, he will forgive you. If my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways. Pray, Holy Spirit, let's go there. God, you never said you're going to come here, but let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, Lord. Let's do it, Lord. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ah, two Chronicles, right? Two, two Chronicles. Is it 14, 7, Lord? Hold on, fam. Just looking for my stuff. True Chronicles. If my people who are called by my name Alright, if my people <laughs> who are called by my name will humble themselves, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Oh, you want to do that? <laughs> it's never too late. It doesn't matter how far gone you may feel or how terrible um, deeds you have done. God wants his prodigals back those who are living lives outside of the will of the Father and doing things, of course, as well that are distasteful to the Lord, like witchcraft. It's one of the things that God hates. God hates witchcraft. Deuteronomy. Seven things the Lord hates. Seven things he distastes. That's what you say, right, Lord? Mm -hmm. Jesus God, where is that? It's there. It's there in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. <laughs> Deuteronomy and Proverbs, right? Okay, let me go to Proverbs first. Let me go to Proverbs, rather. <laughs> uh, Proverbs. In case you don't believe me. You're like, oh, no, but no. Yeah, God, he said. He hates witchcraft. He hates witchcraft. And it's all rampant today. Let's call it what it is, fam. Witchcraft. That's, that's the order of the day. That is the truth. And God knew that it was going to happen in the last days. And it happened then. It's still happening now. So you called it then. He's still calling it now. Seven things hated by the Lord. Proverbs 6 verse 16 says, There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are distasteful to him. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. Let me talk about the witchcraft part. Do not practice witchcraft, the Lord says. Mm -hmm. That is the one in Deuteronomy. Yeah, it's talking about sorcery, all of that. Yes, 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 yes. Uh-huh. Deuteronomy 18. Let's go there. Thank you, Jesus. Then I'll wrap up, fam. I'll be out of your hair in a second. And give you your day back. Distasteable practices against the Lord. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the distasteable ways of the nations there. 
then here comes the instruction and the command let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire things that are happening today who practices divination or sorcery they are happening today interprets omens engages in, in witchcraft or casts spells or who is a medium or a spiritist or who consults the dead busy forming weapons there forging and forming fashioning weapons spiritually against those who are chosen by the lord no weapon formed against you shall prosper i'm talking about the one now who is in christ jesus in spirit and in truth whether it's a spiritist whether it's a medium whether he's a sorcerer a wizard a wicker the a witch i don't even know what well, satanist whoever they are that entourage that clan them lots but God is also calling them to repentance. So if you are one of those, you fall under those categories. I'd like to, as, as, a, as a sister in Christ Jesus, one who is compelled and I've been commissioned to, to propel the gospel in boldness. I'd like to invite you to accept the Lord Christ Jesus as Lord over your life. Anyone who does these things is distasteful to the Lord. And because of these distasteful practices, the Lord your God will drive out the nations before you. If this message tucks at your heart, then you're like, Lord, I want to repent. I want to get out of this, Lord Jesus. Let's pray the prayer of salvation together. Just have to repeat after me. And just call unto the Lord. It's the sinner's prayer. It's also known as the prayer of, sal of, of, of salvation. And invite the Lord Christ Jesus to be Lord over your life. Repeat after me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in prayer, asking for the forgiveness of my sins. I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross at Calvary, that I might be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Father, I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I ask you right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and will worship you all the days of my life. Because your word is truth, I confess my, with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with you by faith on that. And may the God of glory richly bless you on this journey. And welcome to the kingdom of God who is in heaven, who is alive and well. Whose kingdom is, 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 is no end, Christ Jesus. And he's well um, back on his way. I'm looking forward to that day, I'll tell you straight. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right, fam, I'll leave it here. Thank you so much for being a part of the teaching. Um, just a quick reminder again to please, um, for many of you who might not know, I'm a radio presenter as well. Yes, one working in, 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 in the, still within the gospel genre. Um, I'm all about Jesus all day, every day. Behind the mic, in front of the screen, everywhere I go, it's Lord Jesus back to back. Um, just apart from being, you know, in full-time ministry, being an evangelist, teacher of the word, but I'm also um, a radio host at the Benning Bush. That's the name of my show at Africa USA Radio. That is our radio station. We broadcast from across the globe. We are scattered everywhere across the globe. Um, so if you have a moment, just visit AfricaUSARadio.com and also follow us at Africa USA Unity Events. We are on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And I also have a page for Friends of the Benning Bush. It's called Friends of the Benning Bush on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, but again, I just want to remind you, if we have not um, gone out to vote for myself and many other brothers and sisters in Christ coming from South Africa, um, they are artists and then I'm the, um, the host there um, in terms of the categories. <laughs> I've been nominated under the International Gospel Announcer of the Year by the Texas uh, Gospel Music Excellence Awards 2024. And that event is due to be held in February next year. Um, in Houston, Texas in the USA. So please go out and vote. And um, the way to vote is to visit their website at tgmea.org. tgmea.org. And uh, just go under the category international and you'll see my name right there under, um, under the gospel announcer of the year. And please just vote. Um, you can vote as many times as you like. The closing date is on the 15th of, of October this year. So the more votes your girl gets, the better chance she has of obviously bringing the award home. But this is all really to the glory of God. I can't thank the Lord enough for 
this um blessing you know it's all he's doing if it was not his will it wouldn't have happened so thank you jesus for that um i give him all the glory it's all for him really and i actually didn't want to say anything about this but the lord was like okay then here i am <laughs> here i am but um oh glory to god and this is just you know one of those ways i guess he's doing only that which the God of glory is able to do in my life and yours. So thank you, Jesus. I owe it all to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God. Lord God. Um, and thank you again to each and every person who has been supporting um, the Benny Bush at Africa USA Radio and Africa USA Radio at large, who is also part of God's Hara mission. May the God of glory bless you. Whichever way you support us, whether you share our posts, you know, whatever, whatever, do what the Lord leads you to do you know we are all in this together we are all having a role to play in the great commission so we love you and thank you for the support may the god of glory bless you and um i wish you the rest of the week to be prosperous i think it's a day left um and have a wonderful weekend if i am here tomorrow then i'll be here if i'm not just know that the lord and i are <laughs> well he hasn't given me the, ring, the green light yet so to god be the glory thank you so much for being a part of the teaching and um yeah feel free to share this broadcast if you are led by the spirit and um again do not be governed by fear but move by faith um because um without faith is is impossible to please the lord and faith in christ jesus of course um yeah may the god of glory bless you until we meet next time stay blessed